Welcome to Maroon's Tuesday Night Live at Mac and Bob's in Salem, Virginia, with your hosts, Nick DeSanctis and Richmond Bramblett. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mac and Bob's here on Tuesday, April 17th from Maroon's Tuesday Night Live. I'm Nick DeSanctis here with Richmond Bramblett. Tonight we'll be joined by softball player Leona Rainey, softball assistant coach Patty Sheedy, men's basketball player, rather men's baseball player Mark Manthe, women's lacrosse player Rosie Nisley, head women's lacrosse coach Mary Schwartz, men's lacrosse junior attackman Rich Lachlan, men's lacrosse head coach Bill Pilot, assistant athletic director for external relations Brad Moore, and Dave Sampson with the Workhorse of the Week. Now we're going to look over some of the action over the past week, starting with men's lacrosse. Uh, the men's lacrosse team ranked ninth, along with Dickinson in the U.S. ILA Division III poll, defeated Randolph on April 7th, 26-3, and Randolph making 25-14 on April 14th during Alumni Weekend to improve to 10-3 and on the season. It was the program's fourth straight season of at least 10 wins, the longest streak in its storied history. It also marks the ninth time over the last 10 years to eclipse 10 wins in a season. Last Saturday was Senior Day for the 2012 class. As they were recognized prior to the start of the contest, Senior, Re- Senior Reed Mayberry scored a career-high seven goals en route to the ODAC victory. Jeff Keating earned ODAC Player of the Week honors after a stellar performance versus Washington and Lee and Randolph College. On April 3rd, Joey Coretti was tabbed with ODAC Player of the Week honors as well. The women's lacrosse team has won four games in a row and now carries an 8-5 and five record, 5-2 five and two mark in the ODAC, heading into the final week of the regular season. It was senior day as well for the women on Saturday as they were recognized before the start of the game against Barry. Senior goalie Tina Ciccoloni earned the win in goal for the Maroons, while fellow senior Liz Narwitz scored the final goal of the game. In addition, Kate Movich tallied a career-high two goals in her regular season finale at Donald J. Kerr Stadium. Senior captain Liz Harchie also netted two goals for the Maroons. Freshman Dara Everts earned ODAC Player of the Week honors for the first time in her career on April 10th. Marks the second time a Maroon has been named to the weekly award as Kathleen Wager earned that mark on March 20th. Senior day activities continued as well for the softball team who also recognized their two seniors, Catherine Corey and Felicia Lowry, on Sunday during their senior day. The Maroons rolled to victories of 24-0 to and 17-0 to in five innings in both games in an ODAC sweep of Sweetbriar. A day earlier, the women rallied to knock off Bridgewater in Game 1 at 7-6 to six in eight innings as the Maroons split with the Eagles. Last Tuesday, the, women's knocked off, the women knocked off Eastern Mennonite in ODAC doubleheader, sweeping the Royals with scores of 4-0 four, four and 14-9. Lowry, who hit three home runs in the, game, in the Game 1 victory over the Vixens on Sunday, was named ODAC Player of the Week. It is the third Maroon softball player to garner the weekly honor with Stephanie Clark and Kelly Higby earning it on March 27th. It's an exciting time for the baseball program at Roanoke College as they are in the hunt for an ODAC tournament bid. They split with Eastern Mennonite on Saturday to improve to 16-19 and 19 on the season, which ties the school record for wins in a single campaign. Last Wednesday, when the men completed the sweep of Guilford College, winning 12-9 to keep their postseason hopes alive, they also split with Hampton City in a crucial road ODAC doubleheader on April 7th. Heading over to women's tennis. They completed a successful regular season with a record of 12-6, and six, including a 7-3 seven, seven to three mark in the ODAC. They earned a number three seed in the conference tournament, uh, basically by playing all but two matches on the road this spring. The women are one win shy of tying the single season win record, which is held by the 1993 and 1995 teams. The duo of Laura Dodson and Corbin Leitch have compiled a 13-4 record, including an 8-2 and two mark in conference doubles matches this season. Uh, Jen Ast- and Tozik uh, has a 10 at 2 singles record heading into the postseason at the number 3 slot while 6 and 1 in ODAC matches. The golf team hosted the 2012 Roanoke Invitational during Alumni Weekend at the Roanoke Country Club. The men placed 5th overall, while Brandon Ketron, who had on the show just two weeks ago, placed 7th individually to lead the Maroons. And moving on finally to track and field, Carmen Graves placed 8th overall and ran a personal best time of 2 minutes, 8 seconds, point five, breaking her previous record to set a pre, her previous set school and ODAC record of 210 at the Sea Ray Relays last weekend. She now sits atop of the 800-meter ranking in D3 by over a second and a half. The meet hosted by the University of Tennessee included top Division I runners and professional athletes. And another note about Carmen Graves, uh, she earned uh, ODAC Runner of the Week this week for uh, outdoor track and field, and now she has earned the 
player of the week in soccer in the fall, runner of the week in outdoor track and field in uh, the winter, and now in picked up the trifecta in the spring. So congratulations to Carmen Graves and all, the, and all of the uh, athletes that have earned ODAC player of the week over the last two weeks. And we'll be right back with junior softball player Leona Rainey. Stay with us. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. Roanoke softball junior Leona Rainey. Leona, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, this is your third season at Roanoke College playing for the softball program. Uh, you've been a part of a, a 31 season in 2010, uh, been named NFCA All American in 2011, and ODAC Rookie of the Year in 2010. Uh, that's quite a resume for someone just in their junior year. Uh, what was the deciding factor for you to come to Roanoke College? Um, I would have to say that the coaches at Roanoke were the only ones that, I guess, really strive to push academics. So that was kind of a positive for Renault College. Now this season the Maroons are 20-8 and eight and have played against some very tough competition at the beginning of the season with Salisbury twice, Bridgewater, and Easter, Easter Mennonite. Uh, your team has done well playing with only 12 players on the roster as opposed to the previous years uh, with about 20 on the roster. What's been the difference this year from the last couple of years? Definitely team chemistry. I mean, we have from the really, really quiet girls to the crazy, fun girls, but it, it works. Like, we mesh really well, so I think that's been do a huge you, factor. Do you think that team chemistry, it's it's been better because it's been a smaller group that you have, you're able to get closer with each other? I wouldn't say that number would be the leading factor, just more or less that everyone wants to be there. So... Now, uh, as we said, your team has survived most of the year with a, sh a short stacked roster. Two other, two other circumstances have really come out this season. One, only having one pitcher for half the season, and then your injury uh, heading into the beginning of the season. Can you talk a little bit first about Kelly Higby's success as a freshman, uh, really having to put in almost every inning for the first half of the season, and, and then about your situation? Well, Kelly, I've played against Kelly all through high school in travel ball, so she's always been that kind of person that wants the ball, wants to make things happen, wants the win. So she's a soldier, so I think that's helped us a lot. And by her being like that, that's made everybody else really step up because if she can do it and pitch every inning, everybody else should put in the effort too. Sure. Now, and about uh, talking about your injury a little bit and, and how it really maybe affected you at the start of the season and then coming into the second half. Oh, um it definitely, it, it was a scare, so, but just working through it, I guess. Um, originally, I was supposed to just hit, but then come game time, I told I really wanted to be in the game, and I wanted to contribute as much as I could, whether it be DHing or in the field, but whatever the coaches wanted, that was their decision. They asked me how I felt, and I was ready to go, so. And is, is that a factor of just the will to want to play, knowing that you have less people on the team who can who can be able to help? fill that position definitely having only 12 girls it kind of made me have to decide quite early whether I wanted to go ahead and play or go ahead and get my surgery but I don't think I could uh, leave my teammates just sure. with 11 girls and two outfielders so yeah I think the numbers was a big decision for me now looking ahead the softball team has a big weekend uh, which is the last of the regular season uh, before the ODAC tournament on April 27th through the 29th uh, at Moyer you play against tough ODAC foes, including Lynchburg and Randolph, to close out the 2012 regular season. Do you feel that you all are prepared for the final stretch of this season? Most definitely. We've been in the best shape since I've been here. 
great practices. We're always doing something, never just standing around. So I feel like that's definitely helped us in keeping our motivation up. So, yeah, I think we are. Now, last weekend you helped celebrate Senior Day for Catherine Curry and Felicia Lowry in a special ceremony prior to the start of the game. Uh, it also marked Mike Mitchell's 100th victory uh, in his career as both seniors played in all 100 victories. What does this senior class mean to you as a player? Well, I've actually been playing with KK, Catherine, for about nine years now. We played against each other in high school, played on the same travel team. So she's been one of my best friends for quite a while. So that was definitely a little warming to me. It's kind of a bittersweet feeling. But, no, those two girls, they bring more to this team than any senior that I've ever played with. So. Well, Leona, good luck this weekend uh, with the games that are coming up and the, and the close of the regular season. And obviously, good luck with uh, the ODAC tournament. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. We'll be back in just one moment with Patty Sheedy. Stay with us. All Sports Cafe. Amazing food and your games in high definition. Bring your maroon card and your friends and enjoy Salem's best wings, succulent ribs, our signature sandwiches, wraps, and burgers, fresh salads, pizza, and more. Stuck on campus but still want great food? We deliver. Check out our menu online at allsportscafe.net. We can even cater your next event. Try us once and you'll love it. All Sports Cafe, conveniently located just off campus on Main Street. Sheedy, first of all, Patty, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Now, you have quite a resume here at Roanoke College as an assistant coach for the softball program uh, for nearly a decade uh, since you started working with both uh, Alan Bays and, and Mike Wal Walthall. Uh, the program went to heights that haven't been seen since you left. Uh, those included five ODAC championships, back-to-back -back World Series appearances, and five NCAA tournament appearances. It's you know quite astonishing. How was it all able to, to come together like that? Well, it was a good team effort. Um, Coach Bays was excellent at um, recruiting in athletes to the team right at the beginning. He was able to sell the fact that you were building a new program. You could step right in and play right away. Um, we were lucky to get two really strong classes um, that were able to, you know, first year win the ODAC, second year lose the first game in the region. Next time they got to, you know, they won their region and made it to the, to the national championship. And then their senior year got to do the same thing. And that leadership and you know cohesiveness really worked well for us. Now, in 2002, uh, you and Mike Walthall were both named NFCA National Coaching Staff of the Year. Uh, this is right in the middle of a stretch of back-to-back 40-win seasons and producing three All-Americans who are now in the Hall of Fame. How does it feel to be recognized on, on such a national scale? Uh, it was amazing. I mean, one of the nice things about it is that it's a staff. And so it was Coach Bays, myself, Coach Walthall, and it was a team effort. And... Um, you know, I can't say enough about what Coach Bays was able to put together as a coaching staff because he, he allowed us to do our strengths. And, you know, I was in charge of the infield and pitching, and, and he let me do my thing and, and let Mike do the outfield, and it, it just worked all together really well. That's interesting, that again, that it was coaching staff of the year. It's, it is always good to see the, the, the recognition of the, of the whole group. Right, you usually see it as the head coach gets all the credit, Absolutely. but it was, it was really nice to, to see it be the whole group. Now, you have a, a close relationship with your players uh, that played under you, uh, known for a no-nonsense coach. Uh, you got the most out of your players, which resulted in winning teams and major accomplishments. What was the most gratifying aspect of your coaching position at Roanoke? What I liked was I was able to take some um, athletes as, in the, as infielders who, you know, people weren't looking at them, didn't think that much about them. They, you know, they weren't big, they weren't tall, they, they didn't have all the pieces you would expect. And just get the most out of them so that they just, you know, my my way of coaching was to give the ball an inch t further away each time, each time, each time, and, you know, just challenge them to get that ball. And it got to be quite, you know, competitive. And it kind of just, I just I felt like it really just made them believe in what they were capable of doing. And then in the games, they were willing to make that risk because we had done it so many times in practice. 
do you think being part of a, a Division three program, that's a plus of being able to have some athletes who want to be there to, to play and to work hard for you and not necessarily have to feel as much pressure as, as normal things you can go out and actually have fun and try and play as hard as they can? Well, I think, you know, the fact that, you know, they're not getting any money to do it. They're doing it because they love it. It's a sport that they don't want to give up yet. They're ready to – they want to keep playing a little bit longer. Um, there's – you know, as we heard earlier, you know, it's that team cohesiveness and enjoying being with each other and the fact that you're winning is a lot more fun also. So I think, you know, D3 athletes are great to work with because they're there for a reason and they come every day and, you know, they're getting the joy out of it, but they're not getting any, you know, monetary val- you know, value from it. Sure. Now, in April of 2008, uh, you were named athletic director of Patrick Henry High School, ending your run as assistant co- softball coach at Roanoke. You were also a volleyball coach at Patrick Henry, uh, coaching some successful teams for the Patriots. Can you tell us a little bit about your athletic programs at Patrick Henry and what really that job entails? Um, last couple of years, our athletic programs have really taken off. Um, last year, we won the Supremacy Cup, which is the, the most points in the um, Western Valley District, which is AAA teams around here. And... Um, All of our programs, I think we had last year 11 district championships. We went to regionals in 11 sports and went to the state tournament in two. So, I mean, our programs have done really well, and it's a a great place to work, and athletics and academics go together. It's a lot like Roanoke from that standpoint. Now, taking it all in, looking back, is there a particular game, moment, or tournament run that really always stand out in your mind while at Roanoke? I would have to say that our first national championship um, games, because they were right here in Salem, and our first game that we won, I think the entire Salem city was there. Um, They opened it up. You know, they released the the workers at the college. They were all there. You could hear the cheers all the way into town from Moyer. And it was just an an amazing environment. And you don't usually see that for softball. You don't see it at the D3 level. And it was just just such a great experience to do it at home. Well, Patty, we appreciate you coming on the show and talking to us, and hopefully you can come back again and, and, and talk to us uh, at another time. I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We'll be right back in just one moment with junior baseball player Mark Manthe. Stay with us. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7, in Roanoke, Salem, Botata, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. For information or schedules on Valley Vision TV programs, visit us on the Internet at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. here with junior baseball player Mark Manthe. First, Mark, thanks for joining us. All right, thanks for having me. Now, this is your junior season, one of the best years for the baseball program uh, as the program tied school record victories heading into the final games of the season. What has been different about this season in your perspective? Well, this season, I think, has been the best on the field and off the field for the baseball team. We have just a chemistry unlike any of since I've been here before. Everybody, I mean, it, it's just great. The young guys and the old guys, everybody meshes together great. We've getting, we're getting freshman production like we haven't had in the past. We have senior leadership like we haven't had before. I mean, it, just the uh, just aspects that we've had in the past are just coming together like never before. So, Now looking ahead to Saturday against Randolph-Macon, uh, they're a solid baseball team and have pretty much earned a spot in the ODAC tournament next weekend. Uh, the Maroons who are sitting at the number six seed heading into this weekend we really need to take care of business against the Yellow Jackets to earn uh, the second bid ever into the conference tournament. Again, it's it's an exciting time for the baseball program. Can you tell us at what point in the season do you think this team was really a contender for the ODAC? I, I think, I mean, from the very beginning, everybody kind of had a feeling like this was going to be a special year. Um, we actually started out 0-5, but we were playing competition that was, uh, you know, some, some of the better competition we're going to see. 
and we were hanging with teams. We, we lost by one or two runs in the first three games, and we're thinking, man, we're just a step and a half away. And then right after that, we had won five straight. And I think one, once that happened, that kind of confirmed everybody's feeling like, you know what, we're, we're pretty good. We're going we're gonna to compete for uh, something special. So. And I went down with uh, the baseball team to uh, the South Carolina trip. That's right, I saw you there. South Carolina trip. And I was in the dugout, and they said, uh, I heard a couple of players say, you know, definitely think that this could be one of the years that we make a good run yeah. in the ODAC tournament. And I think I've heard that from multiple players through the, through the season. Definitely, I think yeah. that kind of positivity carries you all through. Uh, through the tournament. Now, Saturday is going to be se- senior day for six members of the baseball team. Knowing the situation and with it being the final game of their careers at Kiwanis, how big is this Saturday to you and your teammates? Well, yeah, these these seniors have been great. I've, I've known them for the last two or three years at least, and they've gone through some some tough seasons lately, but this is this is their chance to finally uh, finally come out on top. So, I, I, I mean, it, it means the world to me. I can only imagine what it means to them to just you know, extend their career because this is this is the last chance they're gonna have to play. So, uh, I'm I want it bad. I'm sure they want it even more than I do. So, now for you for you yourself, you've enjoyed another solid season for the Maroons and and have had one of the best sports memories any player could could possibly imagine. Yeah. Uh, that moment was a walk off home run uh, to upset uh, number 11 Alvernia University in a thrilling comeback win. Yep. Can you take us back to that moment and what was really going through your mind? Well, that was. That's never happened to me before. That that was my first uh, walk off home run, and that's uh, that's a special feeling. We were, and coach told me before the game we've never beaten a ranked team since he's been there, and they were number 11 at the time. And uh, you know it was the bottom of the ninth and two outs, and uh, I, I actually swung for the fence. First time I ever swung for the fence, and he threw me a real fat pitch, and I got every bit of it. So that that was. Uh, just, just running around the bases knowing that we'd upset the number 11 team in the country. That's that's something I'll never forget. Definitely. There are a lot of us in the press box who were yeah, going just as crazy as a lot of the people yeah. on the field. It was uh, it was certainly something uh, to, to behold. Now, you are earning your mark in the history of uh, the baseball programs. You're ranked among the top ten in nearly every offensive category at Roanoke College. Uh, with the team improving each year uh, with your progress as a player, are you excited about the future of the program, especially next season being your senior year? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. We, I mean, uh, not taking away from the older guys, but the younger guys that we have, uh, they're, I mean, they're stepping up as freshmen and sophomores, so they're going to develop into, you know, even better uh, sophomores and juniors, respectively. So I think, uh, I mean, we, we lose good players. We lose some very good players this year, but uh, I think the future is even brighter than it is right now. Now, Mark, again, you you all got the uh, the game this weekend uh, against Randolph Macon. What have you all been working on uh, to get ready for this game? Uh, just me- uh, mentally prepared more than anything. I mean, uh, we are right on the fence right now. We uh, if we win two, we're in. If we win one, we need some other things to happen. So everyone's just making sure that nothing's left to chance. We have to win two. So. Uh, we're getting just mentally prepared. We're getting physically prepared. We're, we're practicing harder lately than we have all year long. So uh, just making sure everything is firing at all pistons with uh, pistons with everybody, pitching, hitting, catching, just making sure we're as flawless as we can be. Well, Mark, we appreciate you being on the show, and good luck this weekend against Randolph-Macon. I'll be there Great. Thanks in very the box much. doing PA. All so right. Look forward to seeing We'll you. be there, and we'll be right back in just one moment. Nick will be here with Rosie Nisley. Stay with us. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem.
Welcome back to Mac and Bob's and Tuesday Night Live. I'm joined now by women's lacrosse player Rosie Nisley. Rosie, thanks so much for coming down. We always ask players this, just to start off with, what originally attracted you to come down to Roanoke College? I actually wasn't even planning of even coming here. I was um, convinced by my traveling coach to stop by here on my way to commit to UMBC. So um, on my way here, I like had so much fun. And I, when I got to UMBC, I declined my commitment. That was so. an impact. Yeah. Now, last season as a sophomore, you started in 15 of 18 games in attack, scoring 12 goals along with seven assists and helped leading your team up to the ODAC championship game. How tough was it for you to build off a season that was that good this year? Well, we did lose a lot of key players, but we have a lot of good players this year. And we are a really young team, but we're just we're finally starting to figure things out, and I think we're going to do very well. This season, you've started all but one game on a tank, totaling 15 points. With the ODAC tournament coming up fairly quickly, are you looking forward to another crack at Lynchburg and Washington Lee? Definitely, definitely. We've gotten so much better. We're more disciplined, and um, I think that they're going to have a really rude awakening. <laughs> Is there one game this season or over your career that really stands out to you? Um Barry College, our most recent game. I think finally we're starting to pull everything together and work together. So, yeah. Against Barry on Alumni Weekend, uh, Senior Day. How was it preparing to give the seniors their send off? Um, it was hard. It's really hard. I'm just really lucky to be able to play with such amazing players. And um, one of the players, Elizabeth Narwich, I played with since high school like all my important college career of playing is just I'm so glad I got to play with her for this long. Now your team went to Puerto Rico for spring break last month and even played a game down there. What was that whole experience like? Um, it was it was it was a lot of fun not only because it was beautiful but um, we became a lot closer as a team and got to know each other a lot better so I think it, that was that was what really helped us become a better team. Now, with the season winding down, is there one game left that you particularly are looking forward to? Or do you just want to get to ODAX? Mm, I really hate W. Or I just want to get to ODAX. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we're not a fan of Washington and Lee. That's probably a better way to yeah. say it. Okay. <laughs> Rosie, thanks so much for coming down. We appreciate it. I'll be right back with women's lacrosse coach Mary Schwartz. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7 in Roanoke, Salem, Botata, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. For information or schedules on Valley Vision TV programs, visit us on the Internet at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. Welcome back to Tuesday Night Live. I'm joined now by women's lacrosse head coach Mary Schwartz. Coach, your team's riding a high since the last time you were on the show earlier this month as you have won four straight, including a 23-6 to six victory over Barry this past weekend. Uh, what has been different about this team over the past month? I think we've been uh, we've been struggling trying to get a complete game in. And, you know, one game the offense would be, you know, kicking it and the defense would, would not be stopping the 1v1s. And then the next game the defense would be working in. Barry, I think, was that game. I was like, guys, we got to put it together. we got to start peaking because, you know, this is the time you want to start doing that. And I think that's just really what it was. We've been, we, we had a whole week of practice, and I think uh, the challenge with the games before, we had six games in two weeks, so we didn't have a lot of time to really break things down. So that whole week of practice really helped us to focus on our defense, which is the one area that we really wanted to work on, and it made the big difference going into that game. Saturday before the big win, uh, you honored your seniors, the class of 2012. Uh, what will you take away from this senior class when they walk across the stage in, uh, what's my countdown, at 19 days, I think? Yeah, the, I think the commitment, um, you know, that class started with about nine girls. And uh, 
uh, ended up with two that with the original class, and we picked up Tina and Katie uh, a little bit later. And, and I think it's just the commitment that they've all given to the team, and they work really hard. And it's just, uh, you know, the leadership of um, Elizabeth Harchie as a captain, you know, because I only picked one captain. I mean, you know, she's probably been my best captain that I think I've had overall in the eight years that I've been here. So we'll miss her. During Alumni Weekend, which was this past weekend, the Hall of Fame Committee recognized the 1992 women's lacrosse team. Uh, which made it to the final four that year, and even Tracy Cohn honored as the coach of the year. You and your team were at the ceremony, got to take that in. What was that experience like? That was, I think, you, you know, I, I asked the team to be there because I just know how special that is, you know, to have, you know, you got alumni who, you know, have such a, you know, rich history here at Roanoke. And, what, you know, they got to meet some of the girls that came back. And when Courtney went up to speak, uh, she was speaking directly to the team. And, and there were some things that she said to the team that I think really impacted them. When they watched the video, I mean, the first time I got to see the video, uh, I mean, I got chills in, in some of the, you know, things they were talking about. And at the end, she closed it, and she looked directly at the team because there's a, a tradition of this saying that, that we say before every game, and it's scoo mau mau. And she, she talked right directly to the team and said, scoo mau mau, girls. And I just think that that really – so that really built up into the weekend to our game, too. That was a, a big moment for them. Gina Valens was a three-time All-American, now assistant coach on your coaching staff, had her picture hung up here at Maccabos during Alumni Weekend. Can you tell us about her impact on the coaching staff this season and her adjustment from player to coach? It was an easy adjustment, uh, I think, for Gina. She, you know, she's been with the system a long time. I think she came in, uh, she knew the girls were going to respect her. I think that was the thing that she was worried about. And honestly, um, you know, what she's done in the office, and out in the field, I mean, I, I, it, I'm going to be sad to, to lose the, the commitment that this girl has, has really given, you know, as a player and now as a coach. And she really stepped into that role, I mean, better than anybody that I've seen. And she just has a great vision on the field. You know, she, she just sees, just like as she was a player, she's able to transition that into being a coach. And a lot of people can't do that, and especially as young as she is. So she's, uh, she's done an incredible job as a coach. Moving ahead to the final weekend of the season, uh, you have – Two remaining ODAC games against Bridgewater on Wednesday, Virginia Wesleyan on Saturday, and then a non-conference matchup against Christopher Newport on Sunday. How have you prepared your players for this final stretch of three games leading into the ODACs? I mean, this is this is it. I mean, they know how important these next two games are. They know um, we need to focus one game at a time. They know the ODAC games are more important than the Christopher Newport game, even though that game's they're thinking about it already. But it's kind of like, okay, we got to get through Bridgewater and take care of business and then go take care of you know, Virginia Wesleyan, and then we can focus on CNU. And it's, it's a hard week because they're, you know, finishing up school. You know, they only have, I mean, less than a week left of school. And, and it's just so, – so really just trying to get them to focus. We've cut back practice time so that, you know, we can go in and be efficient in the time. So, I mean, they're ready. I mean, they're, I really think they're peaking at the right time. Now, Rosie Nisley just told us about a team that she was hoping she'd have the chance to face uh, once ODAX are all around. Do you have any preference? Um – I don't really want to see Guilford right away. Um, I think they're they're that sleeper team out there that can. Uh, re- really, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to start off playing uh, WNL, which we wouldn't. But um, really, there's there's not one team. I, uh, Guilford would be the team that I wouldn't want to see first. What do you think your team's going to need to do this weekend against Bridgewater, Virginia Wesleyan, uh, to really lock down your place in the ODAC standings? I mean, we need to win both. I mean, I think we win both. We'll finish. Um, I think third. I, I don't know if we have a chance to do second. I think. Uh, um, I think Lynchburg would have to lose to Randolph. I'm not sure if that would happen, but I'd just like to lock in third place so that we're, we're hosting, you know, one of the quarterfinals here and just kind of to get us back into that, the semis. Thanks, Mary. Good luck this okay, coming weekend. We'll Thanks, see you again Nick. for the ODAC tournament. I'll be right back with men's lacrosse junior attackman Rich Lachlan. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the presidential scholarship, which was huge for me.
Welcome back. I'm joined now by men's lacrosse junior attackman Rich Lacklin. Rich, coming down here from Canada, what originally attracted you to Southwest Virginia and this small school up here in the mountains? Yeah, you know, yeah, well, like, uh, I didn't really know where uh, where I wanted to go. A couple of schools were recruiting me, and as soon as I came down here, the first thing, it's not snowing every day, so that was nice. <laughs> uh, the weather was beautiful, you know, sunny, and I came down here, all the people were really nice. I uh, watched the lacrosse game. They play high-paced lacrosse all the time. Loved it. As soon as I came down, I loved it right away. North of the border, there's a lot of box lacrosse as opposed to the outdoor game that we see here, more in the United States, especially once you get below the Mason-Dixon line. What differences do you see right off the bat or related as a player from box lacrosse moving outside? Uh, well, I mean, box is a lot faster sport. You know, it's always moving, five on five. It's indoors, kind of like hockey. Uh, you know, it's just a lot faster, a lot of quick quick stick stuff so here it's a lot more running you know so uh <laughs> had to get used to that and using both hands i still haven't conquered that one yet still trying to work <laughs> on that but uh yeah just to, like the big field the slide packages you know all that stuff bigger net though i like that <laughs> your freshman year you played alongside another great canadian attackman matt quentin now q was drafted later on that season by mm -hmm. boston of the national lacrosse league did you have the opportunity to really work with him inside and learn some things? Yeah, well, that was really nice, you know, coming here and not really playing a lot of field and then being able to watch him and he tell me, like, how he uh, adjusted, like, what helped him, you know. So that was really nice having him there. It helped show me the field game a little bit more. We worked on the pick and roll field. It's a little different than box, which was really nice, too. Helped master that. Having him here at the start of my career at Rona College was really nice. What's it like for you to play alongside of attackmen like Jeff Keating and then Joey Coretti, now Reed Mayberry? Uh, I mean, it's really awesome. The depth we've had at attacks really nice. Playing with Keating's the best. He's a really smart player. Always finds me open. That's really <laughs> nice. So I see him always with a lot of assists and always, always being able to feed me, which is really nice. Joe's great. He's coming back from the injury, which is going to be huge for us. And then Reed's been stepping up lately, too. So playing with the three of them, they're all really close friends of mine, too. So the chemistry is really great right off the bat. So that's something that's awesome. When your dad's in town, we see the Canadian flag get hung up, <laughs> hung up behind one of the nets. Yeah. Uh, we're still looking for a trend on if you score more goals at that net or not, but what does it mean to you to have your country's flag hanging up? I mean, it's really nice. The reason it started came down my freshman year in those two games. I got a bunch of goals there, like two last games, so it's kind of been a little tradition. It's really nice, you know, we're sitting there with the American anthem to see something from home, you know, see the flag still there, just know, you know, remember where I'm from and where I came from, what I'm doing here. Do you sing the American national anthem or O Canada? Uh, no, sometimes a joke at the start, I'll give a little O Canada, but... Sing along with the America one. Starting to get get uh, hanging some of the words now. <laughs> you know, three year, almost three years playing here. Is there one game that stands out to you in your mind? Um, I mean, the Colorado College game did last year because it was our NCAA game, and I had a great game that game. I think I scored like eight or something. But that game, we just came out fine. Actually, the biggest, the big, the best game here for us as a team that I remember was that Stevenson win. That was by far the best. That game was absolutely awesome. After they beat us in overtime last year, being able to all the year before, being able to come and beat them in the quarters was huge for us. That was, that was my favorite game here by far. Now, looking back at the goal, when you caught the pass, your back was to the net. Was that just a turn and shoot? Did you have a chance to even pick your spot, or were you just trying to put it on frame? Um, well, whenever I have my back to the net, I like to know where the net is anyways, you know, try to have some awareness. And I knew that he wasn't going to be on the short side, and as soon as I saw, I saw that short side was open, so I put it there. If he was there, then who knows what would happen, but <laughs> that one worked out. So this offseason, we saw a little bit of a number change. It, a different 19 was running around on the field uh, come the scrimmages and the season opener. Uh, what brought about the number shift? Uh, I've always been number 19 growing up. It's always been like my favorite number. I love Steve Eiserman in hockey. That was where it basically came from, and Paul Gate, too. Uh, I was seven when I was younger, but everyone always wanted So I was 19, came here, and two already had I was thinking about changing to 42 because I had some successful seasons here, but I saw that 19 number open, and I couldn't see it on somebody else again. Even though Tuma made it look great. <laughs> Rich, thanks a lot for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'll be right back with men's lacrosse head coach Bill Pilot. Mac and Bob's open for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem.
Welcome back to Mac and Bob's. I'm joined now by men's lacrosse head coach Bill Pilot. Coach, on Saturday, your team honored its seniors before running over Randolph Macon in front of a huge crowd at Kerr Stadium. Keating set a career high uh, with nine. Uh, maybe still in the show, though, was Reed Mayberry, who had eight points off seven goals. What has Mayberry brought to your team since transferring here from Salisbury? Well, you know, Reed's had a great, great senior year, and, uh, you know, he's a lefty, so that's a big thing in lacrosse to have that lefty on that left side, especially on fast breaks and, you know, the way we like to play and stuff. And uh, he's just really playing with great confidence, and he's really uh, given a lot of good leadership to us down there. So having Keating on the right and uh, Reed Mayberry on the left has been tremendous. Then also you got Richard Lachlan inside and Joey Coretti, who has had a great season inside as well. So we're pretty fortunate with the talent we have down there. Um, Mayberry and Keating, just two of the seniors of the senior class that you guys honored back on Saturday. What will you take away from this class once this season finally comes to an end? Well, you know, it's a great class. They've they've uh, played in a lot of big games. You know, they played in the NCAA Final Four and they played in the quarterfinals. And, uh, you know, they've been ranked in the top uh, 10 for their all four years. And the amazing thing really is the, uh, their record in the ODAC. I think it's 25-1 and one in regular season, something like that. They lost one game in overtime in their four years, which uh, there's no ODAC lacrosse player uh, around at any other team that's even close to that record. So that that's pretty impressive. And there's a lot of good teams in the ODAC. So to have a record like that and you know 24 straight wins or whatever i don't even know what it was i mean that those are records that are pretty tough to beat absolutely max satoski returned to the lineup last game won 16 of 27 faceoffs. without him your team your team seemed to get by okay at the faceoff x what does it mean to be able to put him back in the equation well you know anytime you're getting back to full strength it helps quite a bit so who, whoever's out when they come back it's always a nice thing but we, we always bring guys along slowly and one thing we take a lot of pride in, too, is that we, we always have guys that can answer the bell. You know, if somebody's down or hurt or something like that, we have other guys that can step up in their absence. And uh, the more guys we have healthy, the more competition we have in practice, and that just makes us a better team. And, you know, obviously face-offs have been an area we've been pretty average, I would say, for overall as a team. And, you know, Max is above average, so when he's out there, that definitely helps our facing off. Your team has locked in the second seed in the upcoming ODAC tournament. Knowing that, does that change your approach to the game tomorrow and the personnel? No, no. We're just, you know, ready to play. We want to get guys playing out there, playing our style, playing what we do every game is try to play the way we like to play and push the tempo and uh, make the other team adjust to what we do. And um, we've also been able to get a lot of guys a lot of playing time uh, lately, which is great. So we want to play as many people as possible, you know, against Randolph-Macon. They were a really good team, but they didn't have the depth we had. So we really wore them down. It was hot. Uh, you know, by the second and third quarter, you could just see they were tired. So we'd like to employ that same tactic tomorrow night and as we move forward. Now after tomorrow night's contest at Guilford, you don't play another game until the ODAC semifinals on April 28th. Now as a coach with classes 1A down exams starting up, how do you handle that off time for your players? Well, you know, we're kind of used to it. You know, it's uh, it's not the easiest thing if you were to come into it and not be used to it. I think it could be uh, tough. But for us, uh, we take a few days off for exams so guys can get their studies and give them a little more time to heal up, you know, the bumps and bruises and things like that. And then we'll go, go back to work. So after the game Wednesday, we'll take uh, – Thursday off and then we'll probably practice Friday and Saturday then take Sunday off and then uh, practice a few more days maybe take another day off on Wednesday and then to get us ready for the uh, the tournament but uh, we'll stretch out the days off as well as the preparation so it's, it'll be pretty good and with exams coming that's a lot for for these student athletes to, to concentrate on so you know academics are your number one priority so we want to make sure we get that done. This weekend, the 1992 National Runner-Up team was honored at the College's Hall of Fame ceremony. That team had such an incredible run, the last team to make it to the national championship game. Uh, although you haven't had a team to make it to that big game since, do you think you've had teams that you can relate or compare to that 92 squad? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the 92 team was really special, and those guys had great leadership. You know, we've had teams like that as well. You know, our 09 team was undefeated, the, the only team in ODAC history and Roanoke history to be undefeated in the regular season. I mean, that's pretty magical. Um, and the 92 team uh, really did a tremendous job come playoffs. You know, uh, the one thing we, we've talked about it with the team and with, with the staff a little bit, that 92 team, we won the semifinals, uh, and it was a home game. So we won at home in the Final Four, whereas the last three times I've been to the Final Four, we've been on the road. So if we can get a home game again, I'm undefeated in the semifinals at home, so I want to get home again. I'm 0-3 on the road, and it wasn't <laughs> Salisbury. So that's two good things. No Salisbury in a home game. That helped those boys out. <laughs> Coach, thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks. We appreciate it. Good luck tomorrow night. Richmond, we'll be right back with Assistant Athletic Director for External Affairs, fancy title, for our own sports information director, Brad Moore. Roanoke College, 
timeless and true, smart and solid, practical and professional, making discoveries about yesterday, creating visions for tomorrow, lifted by a winning college spirit, forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College, classic for tomorrow. here with Brad Moore. Now, you've been recently appointed to Assistant Director of External Relations here at Roanoke College as of the last month. Uh, how's the trans I know how the transition has been for you this spring, but can you tell the people watching how the transition has been for you this spring? Uh, it's been a smooth transition uh, thanks to you, thanks to Nick and Reed and all my student workers. They've really been able to help me throughout the process. Uh, spring is the most busiest time of the year for us in the sports information department with nine sports going on at one time, but I've uh, really been blessed with uh, with great help, and uh, Scott and I have really, you know, taken the Maroon Club by the horns and really have been aggressive and gone out and done a lot of stuff on the back end to get it ready for, for Alumni Weekend and uh, for our big events. We're planning ahead, and, and that whole process, of, we've been burning the candle at both ends. So, Absolutely. Uh, but it's been, a, it's been a smooth transition thanks to you guys, and uh, I really appreciate your all's help uh, making it smooth for me. Now, as you mentioned, one of your responsibilities in your new position is co-director of the Maroon Club with the athletic director, Scott Allison. Can you tell us a little bit about your roles with the Maroon Club? Uh, some of my roles are coming up with special events and, you know, soliciting memberships. Uh, this weekend we had, a, we had a really good event. We had, a, you know, close to 300 memberships during our Maroon Club reception and, and We've also done a lot of stuff with the Hall of Fame ceremony, the 1972, uh, 1972 Men's Basketball National Championship brunch, and we've, we're coming up with more special events. We're moving forward in that, kind of doing a lot of the structuring part of the Maroon Club right now, but I feel like it's, it's going to be a success. I'm excited about it. I really am excited about it and taking this next step, and uh, not only for my career, but for Roanoke College, too. I'm, sure. I'm a big fan of Roanoke College athletics, uh, not just because I work here. I've just just the kids that I that I come to know and and also the alumni that are so proud of their institution and, and for the sports that they played. It's you just wanna make you you know, take more of an effort to, to try and give back to the college in that sense and uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. Now, uh, for the people who are watching at home and uh, the people watching uh, on Valley Vision now, um, you said you got about three hundred memberships. How can somebody go and, and become a member of the Maroon Club? Uh, there's different ways to give. You can give online on our website. Uh, you can just go to our homepage and click Maroon Club, and it'll give you all the information you need there. We've uh, recently put that together, and um, we're really proud about that and, and getting that uh, established. We've also got brochures, and, and people can come up to the development office or the athletics office and 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 solicit their membership there. So uh, various ways to give. Uh, won't get into much more detail than that, but you know, as we're – create more of an infrastructure of the Maroon Club, but, but those ways are definitely um, ways to, to give. Now, one of the major events the Maroon Club put on during the busiest weekend of the year for the college, Alumni Weekend, which was April 13th through 15th, uh, within that weekend you had the Hall of Fame reception, 1972 Men's Basketball National Championship Team Brunch, uh, three alumni games, an alumni golf outing, and the Maroon Club uh, launch reception to close the weekend. Could you tell us about uh, the weekend as your first of many events in your new role? Uh, yes, it was it was an exciting weekend. I was very pumped uh, to get it going, and you know, knowing that we had every single athletic event, it seems like was at home, and and you know, thanks to you and and to John Counts and and to all of our staff of students to to help make that a success. JJ Necklaw from the ODAC uh, came in and helped out, so that way I could go to all these events and and be a part of it and introduce myself and and help out with the launch of the Maroon Club and. Uh, just be a face, you know. Um, Scott Allison, he he had his men's uh, men's soccer alumni game, and 
you know, really I didn't have to be there for that. But I wanted to stop by and make a special appearance with uh, with all of his players. And we did uh, some flip cam interviews. And uh, we're editing that video right now for the, for the website and for our Facebook page. And uh, went to the women's soccer alumni game. That was great to see all the uh, all those alumni come back as well. And even the men's tennis match, uh, Carl Sherritt's, uh was there. He's one of the Otis alums there at the at alumni tennis match. And, and then they all came back and came to the Maroon Club uh, reception which was a big success for us uh, at Roanoke College, and we had, a, we had a bunch of people that came by. And uh, Luckily, the men's lacrosse team was playing uh, Randolph-Macon. They, they produced a big win, and, and uh, we had people that were walking back from the game once the game was over and coming by and asking about the Maroon Club and what it was and you know, for more information. And, uh, we were able to, to be around a lot of alumni that were proud of Roanoke College and wanted to do something like this. It, it started a sense of excitement, and uh, I'm excited about this summer and the next year with all the events that we have. I see. I saw some of the footage of this afternoon of, of the flip cam interviews. It's just interesting to hear all of the alumni that were interviewed talk about what the school means to them and, and passing on, you know, information and uh, tips about, you know, after college and, and athletic tips to, to the current students. It's just amazing the, the relationship that has been built through an alumni weekend like that. Yeah, I, I think that the alumni – and the players itself, that, that the current players, I think it's all a big family, and they, they treat it that way. And I've never been at an institution that's more of a family than, than Roanoke College and, that, and their athletic programs. They're all very tight-knit, and I, I love uh, hearing all the interactions and the conversations that you know alum, alum, uh, young alumni will have with an older one or a current player will have with, a, with an alumni in their 40s or 50s. Uh, and they all share one common bond, and that's their sport, and that's their, that's their college that they're so proud of. And... You know, Bill Pilot has, has said a, a lot of times that they want to keep that tradition of, of Roanoke uh, lacrosse going for a long time. And you, you saw that this weekend whenever the 92 team came in and they were talking with all the young players and uh, the younger alumni. And uh, they, they all have one thing in common. They're all winners. And they all won for, for Bill Pilot, for John Pirro, for Scott Allison, uh, and uh, uh, Paul Griff. And uh, so, I mean, they all got one constant thing, and that's that's Roanoke Lacrosse, and and that's just one sport that I'm that I'm mentioning just because it was a uh, alumni weekend and and lacrosse was playing here at home, and you got to see a lot of interaction. But with other sports, I mean, they they all they're all a family, and and they're proud of Roanoke College. Now, kind of moving on from from your new job, you're also doing that job with your old one at the same time. That is uh, director of athletic communications until the end of May. Uh, again, it's quite a workload. I, I I know how much work goes on on the on the behind the scenes, and I don't know if people watching know exactly how much work goes into it. But uh, it is the busiest time of the year with uh, as many sports as we have going on, and uh, nine sports at one time. That is, uh, with all the sports being held here at home during alumni weekend, how did you prepare and execute all of this? Uh, once again, it goes back to the workers that I have. Uh, I I don't even have to train. Nick or Reed or even TJ now that's just started with us, or or you for that matter, that they already know what they're doing. They've been doing it all year. They, you know, Nick's been with me all four years. Reed's been with me for the last two, and he's he's progressed at a rapid rate. And um, with you with you being on um, on staff and helping us out with with game day operations, it it, it made it easy. Uh, the transition, I think, it, going back to that, it just made it so easy to have such a well trained staff and and a staff that's. Not only not only are they getting a paycheck, but they're getting great experience out of it, and they and they want it to be a good product. I mean, you can see all the all the stuff that we have here is attributed to my to my student staff. So without them, I mean, we wouldn't have all these all these great things and, and the initiatives. Um, I mean, I, I'm a part of it, but I really respond to my students. If my students want something new, I want to go after it for them because they really want it. So they take investment in their products. So um, with the preparation aspect. You know, the students, uh, I have to get on the students, you know, a little bit more during alumni weekend, so I have to hit them a little bit earlier, entice them with some food, uh, um, you know, entice them with, a, you know, with an extra hour or something like that. Uh, but, you know, I've got great students, and, and I couldn't have done this without them, and, and uh, I really appreciate all the hard work that they've been able to do. Well, Brad, we appreciate you stepping out from behind the scenes and in front of the camera tonight to talk to us about your new role in the Maroon Club. All right. Thank you very much for having me. If you see Brad around uh, in the next coming weeks uh, during the ODAC tournament and whatnot, walk up to him, talk to him about the Maroon Club, and go to maroons.roanoke.edu uh, to check out what the Maroon Club is all about. And we'll be back in just one moment with strength and conditioning coach Dave Sampson with Workhorse of the Week. Stay with us. 
Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu, featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7 in Roanoke, Salem, Botetourt, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. And we're back here with Dave Sampson for Workhorse of the Week. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. First off, we're going to go and talk about track and field. Track and field coming up. I understand we get a double two for graphic up tonight. Yeah, we both do. men's and women's side by side. Uh, on the let's start with the men's side since we're going to read from left to right, sure. like most people over here do. Tucker Cunningham placed 14th overall in the 110 high hurdles. He was first in D3. The George Mason Invitational. Congratulations to Tucker. Obviously, he's going to win the workhorse of the week for the men's track and field. Uh, on the women's side, we're just going to, rather than going through all those names, we'll say Esther, Hope, Megan, and Jessica. The women's 4x100 relays, they blew the best time in the ODAC away. The girls did great. I believe they were also uh, uh, with a fourth place in the meet themselves mm-hmm. that time. Very impressive showing. I, I watch these girls work out in the weight room and on the track. They, they're doing a heck of a job, so congratulations to Esther, Hope, Megan, and Jessica. Uh, I know Hope will be tickled. She's been pestering me for a daggone T-shirt all year long. So, Hope, come get your little T-shirt. And, and, and new T-shirts now. New T-shirts uh, should be in tomorrow. I'll talk oh. to the printer today. She's bringing them by tomorrow afternoon. All right. New th- th- thanks for bringing that up and creating havoc for me tomorrow. There's nothing else going on. Oh, that's right. There's a men's lacrosse game. There is something going on. That was sarcasm. Moving on to men's tennis. Men's tennis, uh, I got a little, I brought a new face into the fold. Uh, Ian Webster against their, I believe it was against Bridgewater. He was the only young man to win a singles match. Um, Ian's been doing some good work on and off the court, working hard in the weight room and through agilities and, and stuff like that. He's in shape. And so, Ian, hats off. He's currently 7-3 and three this season, 6-2 and two in ODAC. Plays doing a good job. Um, so, Ian, you get the workhorse. All right, so we've gone through men's track and field, women's track and field, and men's tennis, all fairly uncontested. Let's let's go to one that actually there is a, a little. You want some other here. people in there? Sure, absolutely. All right. Make make it uh, make it interesting. We're gonna go and move on to women's tennis. Women's tennis, as the graphic comes up, Haley and Brianna. Are you excited? I am excited. You want to talk a little bit about each? Haley currently eight and nine in singles this season, three and three in doubles play. Uh, she's a freshman. Brianna, three and two in singles, eight and six in doubles play, also a freshman. There's an underlying theme here. Absolutely. I don't know if you've anybody noticed that. Any idea which one of these young ladies is going to win this week? Any? Did you do any research? I know you guys have had these names all day. I don't know if you did your homework or did a little 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 pre-reading. Had any questions for me or no? Reed shaking his head, so I'm Reed's answering no. I'll go ahead and say uh, Brianna Carroll. I'm sorry, it's Haley. Well, I'm, I'm not paid to make decisions <laughs> here, so. No, it was it was a toss up. Uh, I went back and I read um, for the past three or four matches, and Haley had really done a good job, and and she's fought hard. So Haley got the nod this week. All right, now I had Mark Manthe on earlier. We are moving on to baseball, and it is another uh, one person workhorse of the week. And, and I'm giving it to Matt. Um, if you guys follow us online and and all of the uh, Game day notes that they post online. You guys do a great job with that. Matt came up with an eighth inning, two out, bases loaded, bases clearing, double. Three RBI double. He was two for six on the day, but had three huge RBIs in the eighth inning to to pretty much seal the deal on that game. So that's just... That, that's, in my opinion, it's doing the dirty work. Absolutely. And I was proud of him, so Matt, Matt gets the uh, T-shirt this week. That was uh, it, it was an impressive uh, contest by the whole team uh, in, in general that game. Uh, They've move- done a great job all year. I'm, I'm really excited for uh, Coach Wood 
Um, that, you know, he, he's got more kids on the team than he's ever had in the past. Um, and and I, I feel good about him making the ODAC tournament. I hope that's not the kiss of death for him. But they're, I think they're looking good. Looking great. Yeah. And I, I did some uh, reading on them yesterday and today to see how they were, they were looking with respect to the ODAC tournament coming up. And, and it looks like our guys are in. It, it's it's looking it's looking promising for them. They do have Randolph Macon, but again, if they get one win, they break the school record for most wins That's in a right. season. So yeah, yeah. Uh, either way, it's a successful season. And I think they're going to get that. So I'm really happy for them. Coach Wood's done a heck of a job, and I'm happy for all the guys uh, on the team this year. Now moving on to our sports that celebrated senior days uh, over uh, the course of Alumni Weekend. We're going to start with softball, where we have three nominees this week: Felicia, Holly, and Steph. Um, three mainstays on the softball field. Um, Holly, a transfer from Virginia Tech. Uh, Felicia, um, one of our seniors, getting ready to go off to grad school. I know she's still up in the air where she wants to go. And Steph won it last week because she's battled back from elbow and, and shoulder problems. She's back on the mound pitching. So all, all these guys have, have done a great job all year long. Um, it, this is a tough one. Uh, I, You know, I like Steph's effort. She has done game in and game out when she wasn't able to get on the mound. You know, she is, has flat out murdered the ball at the plate. Um, Holly can, can play virtually just about every position on the field. And um, Felicia is, you know, you see her walking around campus. She's always dressed very nicely. You see her doing her hours in the athletic training room, always dressed to a T. Um, she, she just portrays a true student athlete she does a job in the training room and on the field but you get her out on the field and, and the part that i like about her is she's just dirt nasty she kid hates to lose she'll do whatever it takes to win um heaven's heaven's sakes don't get in her way she'll truck you Absolutely. she'll knock you off the base path she's got a, a she swings a heavy stick and when she's behind the plate catching she's not a happy person so don't try to steal on her because she, she'll She'll cuff you and stuff you. Three home runs in the game against uh, Sweetbriar. Impressive. Well. She gets my nod. Absolutely. That that's quite an outing for her. And I think she was, she was uh, was she four for four with it, three home runs and I think she hit, had a double, right? She was she was four for four in game one and then four for four again yeah. in game two. Just she's having a heck of a senior season and it's great. That she's doing it. I know the girls got some big games coming up Absolutely. with respect to the Odax. So, uh, you know, I know we got to get a couple of these games behind us with W's. So Felicia did did an awesome job, and, and hopefully things are going to continue to work out for for the remainder of the season as well as for grad school after we're finished up here. Absolutely. Moving on to women's lacrosse, we have uh, four nominees uh, over the course of two graphics. So we'll start with the first graphic. Here. All right. Yeah, I went big on the nominees. Um, Allie and Dara. Um, uh, an extremely potent scoring combo for the girls this season. These Both these girls right here, I'm glad you guys put them up together. They feed off each other. I know Allie's, uh, she's kind of gets scouted as the go-to scoring threat for, for Roanoke. So what happens a lot of times is, is the other team shuts her off. They try not to let her catch the ball, and that plays right into Dara's hands. She gets it, and, you know, not only do they look alike, but they play alike. So you kind of got to, you know, Rob Peter to pay Paul when you play us and you do sure. these two. You know, you got to pick your poison. If you shut off Allie, Dara's going to burn you. If you try to, to shut off Dara, which I watched the team do that the other day, then, then Allie burns you. So, that you know, they do they, – they both work really hard as you look up there on goals and assists as well as ground balls and calls turnovers. So, you know, good job for both those girls. That's why they're up there today. And then we got two more here. Uh, Jamie Golden and Kathy Wager. Um, both have done – uh, Jamie had a great game uh, against, uh, who do we have out there, Barry College. Mm-hmm. She stepped up, I think had two goals and a couple assists as well. And um, Kathy has really stepped up as kind of a role player when the other teams are focusing on Dara and Allie. Uh, I think Kathy has had a couple, either like six, eight goal games where she really stepped up because they, they left her alone and she made them pay. So that, that's why I got her up there. She's done a good job as well. And it's, i got to tell you, this is a tough decision because all four of these girls over the past uh, three or four games that I've watched them have done a phenomenal job, and it's a tough decision. Um, I know that Daryl was a winner last week. 
So I'm marking her off the list. I hate to do that. I know it's tough to be a repeat winner. It's true. You, you got you got you to really step it up on. even more than you already have. You do. You do. Um, Kathy has won before, but I, I thought she deserved to be nominated. So let's mark her off the list. Uh, at least with Allie and Jamie. Um, I'll just say it right off the bat. Allie's won before, so I'm giving it to Jamie. That's fair. She um, has really done a good job of being a mainstay uh, on the offensive end of the field. Um, she stepped it up from being kind of a role player last year to a starter this year, and she's done great jo- a great job for Coach Swartz, so I'm really happy for her. She works her butt off in practice. So, Jamie, congrats. You'll be the first recipient of the new workhorse T-shirt for the women's lacrosse team. And last but certainly not, not least, men's lacrosse who are in action tomorrow night. Let's go ahead and go to it. That's why, right, the mighty Quakers of Guilford College rolling into town. I think Coach Pilot mentioned uh, phenomenal defense being played by Guilford this year. No, the, the most goals they've given up is a minuscule 18. So, you know, hopefully we'll have a little shocker for them tomorrow. I'm not sure. we we'll have to wait and see. But our nominees for the men's lacrosse team, Reed Mayberry, Joey Coretti, and Richard Lachlan, who was on earlier. Um, I know you guys talked about Reed. Uh, uh, Richard was up here. You've talked about him. He, he had some great things to say. And um, Reed's having a phenomenal year. So is Richard. Uh, I think they deserve to be nominated because they're, they're a tremendous goal-scoring uh, young men. Uh, they do the dirty work. They take a lot of hits on the crease when they're playing. But my award goes to Joey this year or this week. Because Joey took uh, a pretty good hit against WNL, uh, scoring a goal. He's been really hot. He's been having a great year. And he was back on the practice field in full force tonight. So he'll be playing tomorrow night against Guilford. And to me, that's why I want to do men's lacrosse uh, last. That pretty much defines what a workhorse is all about. He's, he's kind of gutting it out. The kid had a uh grade four shoulder separation i was on the sideline and looked at it with the trainer when he came off and it was i I thought he's done for the year i really did and two days later he's out running around the field you know taking shots you know just in his uh in his grays and with his gloves and helmet not really involved in practice but uh he was out there full speed full contact tonight so uh, i just you know you know he's joey's a great kid he wants to go into into coaching he wants to stay around here and coach with us next year and I, I just couldn't be any happier that he's going to get the opportunity to hop back on the field tomorrow and keep the great season rolling that he already has. That, that is, uh, it's going to be exciting tomorrow night uh, to watch this game at home in Kerr Stadium. And as always, we appreciate you having, having you on the show. Thanks for having me. Two weeks, two weeks in a row of, uh, or two shows in a row of the new workhorse of the, of the week. T-shirts come out tomorrow. It'll be in tomorrow afternoon. So be on the lookout for them. We'll be back in just one moment as Nick and I wrap things up here. Stay with us. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7, in Roanoke, Salem, Botata, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. For information or schedules on Valley Vision TV programs, visit us on the Internet at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. And we're back here on Tuesday Night Live. We're going to go ahead and look ahead at the games that are coming up. As uh, Samson and I just mentioned, the men's lacrosse team will host Guilford tomorrow, April 18th at 7 p.m. in their final regular season game. Uh, There will be a tailgate at the Sutton Terrace just outside the Colquitt Center for fans, and it will begin just before the game and run through the third quarter. Uh, There will also be prizes given out for trivia questions from the Exercise is Medicine group in addition to halftime entertainment. The Maroons will receive a first-round bye in the conference tournament and will host the ODAC semifinal contest on Saturday, April 28th at Kerr Stadium. The women's lacrosse team will have a busy week with three of their final games coming tomorrow at Bridgewater. They'll travel to Harrisonburg, followed by a weekend in the Tidewater area with games against Virginia Wesleyan on Saturday and Christopher Newport on Sunday to close out the 2012 season. They'll host the ODAC quarterfinals on Saturday, April 28th. And moving on to the women's... uh, Correction. Moving on to softball. The softball team will host its final two ODAC doubleheaders this weekend, April 21st and 22nd at Lord Bonnetot High School against a tough conference opponent, Lynchburg and Randolph. Be sure to come out and support the young women 
at the ONAC Softball Tournament next weekend, April 27th through 29th at the Moyer Complex in Salem as they try to win the program's eighth conference championship. Baseball team will host Randolph Macon on Senior Day, which will be Saturday, April 21st, starting at noon. And one of the biggest games in the short history of the baseball program is they need a sweep to earn the program's second ever ODAC tournament bid. The Maroons need one win to break the school record for most wins in a season. Women's tennis will host Guilford in the ODAC quarterfinals this Saturday, April 21st, at the EC Campus Courts. Uh, with a win, they can tie the 1993 and 1995 teams for most wins in a season. The men's tennis team will be on the road in the ODAC quarterfinals against Bridgewater on the same day. The Roanoke College golf team will travel to Cape Charles, Virginia, to compete in the ODAC championships held at Bay Creek Country Club April 22nd through the 24th. And in track and field, the men's and women's track and field teams will compete in the 2012 Outdoor ODAC Track and Field Championships, April 20th and 21st, held at Lynchburg College. If you haven't had a chance, you can pick up the latest edition of Play by Play magazine. One of our guests from just a sh- few short weeks ago, Mike Stevens, who also writes for Play by Play, had the chance to uh, slide us in, as you can read about Tuesday Night Live, as well as Brad Moore's new position as Assistant Athletic Director for External Affairs. Thanks so much to Mike Stevens. We really we appreciate the love. Oh, we talked about it earlier uh, with with Brad about how busy uh, these this time of the year is and reading through uh, the reading through the coming up coming events it's there's a lot going on and there's a lot of maroons that could be in the postseason uh, ODAC championships and put on a very good show oh absolutely I mean everybody's got to be rooting for the baseball team at this point absolutely they have the chance to make the ODAC tournament for the first time since the program was reinstated that's going to be huge men's lacrosse has really started to click uh, they're going to be a fun team to watch. Women's lacrosse, we talked to Coach Schwartz as well as Rosie and Isley. They both feel that this team is ready to go. They made a run out of almost nowhere last year before falling to WNL in the ODAC Championship. We'll see if men's lacrosse can get another shot at Lynchburg. That game, though, would be up at Schellenberger Field yep. on a Sunday afternoon. We'll see what happens. I've been out with the baseball team doing a PA and stats for them for the uh, for the entire year. And you were talking about a team who, who looks good every time they play. Caught some, caught some tough breaks here and there. Uh, but, you know, can break the school record, and they're a team that could actually do well in the ODAC tournament if they were able to, to make it in. And, uh, again, everybody's got to be rooting for them. It's just going to be getting in. That's the kicker. They have to sweep Randolph Macon. Let's see. I was talking to um, Jonathan Dana, one of the seniors on that Absolutely. team, and he's he's excited. Absolutely. This is something big. The whole team uh, can really feel it coming on. And, and one of the things is uh, the two teams that have a possibility of creeping into that number six spot, they are playing uh, the – two teams at the bottom of the ODAC rankings, uh, which has got to be at more fuel for the, for the Maroons to really bring out uh, all you know all the big bats on, Help uh, is not on, their on Saturday. Well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Our last episode of Maroons Tuesday Night Live will be two weeks from tonight, Tuesday, May 1st, right here at 9 o'clock in Salem. It will be our last episode of the 2011-2012 campaign. Uh, so we'll see what happens uh, come the fall of 2012 when the program uh, moves forward. It's going to be some changes coming. Absolutely. Can't wait to see what happens after Reed Hall and I head on out. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to our great crew, TJ Kemper and Reed Hall, Sports Information Director Brad Moore. For Richmond Bramblett, I'm Nick DeSanctus saying good night from Salem.